meeting wellness friends. So this video is not the first one I posted. <laughs> And it probably should have been, but I'm just getting my feet wet into this whole YouTube thing. And this video was hard to conceptualize, hard to think about. It's going to be something where I'm going to be very vulnerable and kind of tell you guys about the history of me and my story. So I know there's carnivores out there where their story is super remarkable, like they lost 100 pounds. And you can see that transformation clearly on the outside. My outside transformation is not as dramatic because I wasn't dramatically overweight, but I will tell you that I've had some very dramatic transformations happening on the inside. So I'm gonna start really by saying, you know, I'm a 47 year old woman and I've struggled with my weight, my energy, my mental well-being and my body image basically from the time I was 14 or 15 years old. Uh, I'm about five foot five and I am pear-shaped, which means from the waist up, I tend to stay more slim. Any weight I put on will tend to be in the hip area or the upper thigh area. So when I hit puberty and that weight started to go on to that area, I became quite self-conscious and other girls are not always nice and so I've definitely struggled from that time on to try to stay slim so that's been about a 32 year struggle at this point to try to stay slim and although I've generally stayed mostly slim so from the outside people probably thought well she's healthy she's doing great I definitely was not healthy and was not doing great so even though I stayed slim I know for a fact that I completely damaged my metabolism because I was trying to stay slim through you know they say eat less move more but I wasn't even moving more I was just eating less because after high school while well, in high school I was an athlete I did play volleyball but after high school, I didn't ever exercise on a regular basis. I would maybe go through occasional bouts of, you know, walking, jogging, aerobics, that kind of thing, but nothing that ever stayed very consistent. And so it's, it's just been very mentally exhausting and draining. So I went on this cycle of yo-yo dieting and, you know, gaining, 15 pounds, losing 10, gaining 16 pounds, losing 12, just back and forth. And I basically did that by starving myself. And I would eat less and eat less and eat less. And yes, I would lose weight. But when I literally could not eat any less, I would majorly binge. And that weight would just come right back on. So I spent the majority of my life from 15 to my late 20s or so bouncing up and down from between 120 to 135 pounds, um, just yo-yoing back and forth. And then I would get close to that 135, feel really bad about it, and then begin the starving process again. There were lots of days where I would eat 500 calories. Um, and just go through the day starving. So in my late 20s, I definitely started hearing about the Atkins diet, the low carb Atkins diet. But being Generation X, hello all my fellow Generation Xers out there, going online to look stuff up was just not my go-to move. Because we didn't grow up with that and I just didn't really research it, I just learned things from what people said. And I put learned in air quotes because what people say in general may or may not be accurate, may or may not be thorough. It's just kind of what I overheard, right? So eat fewer carbs. And I've never eaten fewer carbs before, but I did notice that when I ate fewer carbs, I did feel better. I was able to eat a little bit more, but there were some things that I was just very sadly uninformed or misinformed about. So I was definitely uninformed about the inflammatory and terrible nature of processed foods. So, you know, I was into, I would buy the Atkins shakes or the Atkins bars or, or processed things of that nature. 
um, low carb. I also was completely misinformed about how to count carbs. So I did not know that there was a daily carb limit. It was just keep your carbs low. Um, and yes, that's, that's good. And, and, you know, sometimes the limit can be damaging because you sort of eat up to that limit, but I had no idea how many carbs were low. Like what is low carb? What is that? So I did not know that, uh, your body would go into ketosis if you kept your carbs lower than 20 per day or around that level. I didn't know even what ketosis was the difference between sugar burning and going into ketosis, which is fat burning. I knew nothing about that. I just knew that this low carb diet Atkins thing was supposed to help you lose weight. Um, I heard about net carbs. I thought net carbs was the way to go. So I definitely counted net carbs. So I did that from my late twenties up to now, like I'm 47 now. So almost 20 years, 18 years of going in and out of kind of low carb, trying to stay low carb. Um, at one point I took some weight off with low carb, but also low calorie, which was not the way to go. Um, and just feeling miserable, miserable, no energy, lack of excitement for life, uh, feeling hungry and just telling myself, but just don't eat though. You'll get fat. Just don't eat though. So constantly just food controlled me just constantly thinking about it. So although I never put on the 50, the the 75, the 100 pounds, um, it was only because of starving myself and basically just being controlled by food, thinking about food all day long and uh, forcing myself to not eat. And, and I know becoming more and more unhealthy, trying to force myself to have energy, force myself to get through the day. Um, in addition to that, my anxiety started to creep up uh, believe it or not, I am an introvert, which I think is fine. I do need my recharge days, my time to myself, my time to read, my time to process my thoughts, but I wouldn't want to be around anybody ever. Like I was anxious about it. Like, what are they thinking about me? Are they looking at me? All, all of that sort of uh, thing. So come to where I am now, 47 years old, but rewind about six months. <laughs> so February of 2023. I, my weight was starting to creep up again and I got to about 138 pounds. And that was the heaviest I've ever been except for my pregnancies. Um, I, I have two children, so except for my pregnancies, that 138 was the biggest number I've ever seen. So, uh, you know, I'd heard about the keto diet, you know, m m more extreme <laughs> than the Atkins diet, but I didn't really know anything about it, just keto, right? Like bacon, good, carbs, bad. <laughs> That's basically what I knew. And I jumped in. I ate a lot of bacon, a lot of meat, a lot of, I did do cream cheese. I did do some fat, fat bomb type of things uh, with that, but just not knowing very much about it. Um, but you know, I'm a teacher, right? So when the, the, when we all had to go on distance learning in 2020, boy, did that up my social media game because they just sent us all home and said, teach online. Good luck. And we were not trained. We were not told anything about how to do anything. And so at that time, I did join social media groups for teachers, which kind of got me thinking more along those lines. So when I decided to go keto, I joined a couple of Facebook groups for people doing the keto diet. And thank goodness that I did because somebody, and, and, and God bless them, I don't know their name, whoever you are, thank you, uh, in the comments posted something about Dr. Barry. So I went on YouTube and I just went on a Dr. Barry binge. I probably spent two or three months just watching Dr. Barry. So boy oh boy did I get quite the education, right? So. I mean, I just learned every, everything about the proper human diet, the spectrum of eating anywhere from low carb, keto, ketovore, carnivore, and all that, all, all of that education. So if you, if you have not checked out Dr. Barry on YouTube, I mean, where have you been? But seriously, go check him out. And, and if you're doing carnivore, he has a whole playlist dedicated to that. Um, so I also learned from Dr. Barry about the nature of processed foods and seed oils and how terrible those things were. And I had never before tried to cut those things out because I wasn't aware 
of how dangerous they were. And so the first thing I did after watching Dr. Barry was go real keto, like real whole food, heavy meat keto. And uh, then I just didn't, I just tried to keep my carbs 20 total carbs or less per day. I did at the beginning, I did track using an, an app on my phone, just the free version of Carb Manager. For a couple of months I did track just so I could see what I was doing, what I was eating, how many carbs, just keeping track, making sure that my total carbs were under 20. Um, and also not eating any high carb foods, like not if it fits your macros, no, none of that stuff. Um, everything I ate was low carb, definitely. the When I was eating vegetables, they were things like zucchini, Brussels sprouts, things like that. And then of course I ate my avocado, but mostly focused on, on meat. Um, I've always liked meat, actually. People would jokingly call me a carnivore way before I was a carnivore, and I was definitely not, but I mean, they saw how fast I would snarf down a ribeye, right? <laughs> so I could eat ribeyes all the time, and if it had just been up to me back then when I cooked a ribeye for my husband and myself, I would leave off the vegetables. He would ask for those, and then I would make those. Um, but I was perfectly happy, you know, eating a plate of ribeye, even back then, even before knowing what the carnivore diet, you know, even was. So then, honestly, I will say going from keto into carnivore was not on purpose, but I think it's because of my physiology and because of my preferences. So after I watched Dr. Barry all that time, that sort of led me, after I sort of exhausted his library, you know, I got into, you know, some Nisha videos, his wife, Nisha, and I've heard about ketovore and I thought, wow, like, actually, I don't think I'm keto. I think I'm more ketovore. Um, so I sort of slid into ketovore and some people might say that that is still where I am. Although my diet, what I actually eat uh, in a day is mostly uh, beef, bacon, butter, egg, right? Beef, bacon, butter, egg. Uh, the occasional chicken. And so the food that I'm putting in is just those things. And, you know, I still have not given up my coffee, which is why some people might say, well, then you're not carnivore. Okay, that's fine. So some carnivores have coffee, some don't. Um, but if you still want to call me ketovore, I'm okay with that. It's not about the label, right? It's about what is good for me. So my coffee, uh, I just did a video about that today, actually. Uh, before I knew about all the processed junk, you know, I used to use the sugar-free coffee mates and things like that. But currently in my coffee, I did switch to heavy cream and it was a lot of heavy cream at first, but now I put maybe a quarter to a half a tablespoon and then just some element chocolate salt in my coffee. And I find that to be delicious and satisfying and so much better than the processed stuff I was putting in there before. This is not to say that I will never give up coffee. I may do that, but as I've eliminated other things from my diet, I'm just kind of trying not to eliminate everything at once. You know, like I gave up cheese, mostly. I won't say that I'll never eat cheese again. You know, I, I, I will eat cheese from time to time, or if I was somewhere with a charcuterie with cheese, I'm not anti-cheese, but I, I know that it makes me puffy. So I, I've limited my cheese. I've mostly eliminated my cheese on the day-to-day -day basis and maybe just eat cheese on the, on the special occasion. Um, so anyways, so the heavy cream, I've not totally given that up. Uh, maybe a total of two to three, not, no, one and a half to two, maybe tablespoons in a day, if that. And it's just in my uh, couple of cups of coffee, three cups of coffee, depending on how I'm feeling that day. Um, I've given up my diet drinks for the most part. So I used to drink tons of Diet Coke, Coke Zero, Diet Dr. Pepper. Um, I still do like them. I will have them very occasionally, um, maybe one a week. So I'm working on eliminating those. And so that, my, my very rare diet soda and then my coffee um, with a little bit of that element chocolate salt in there, those are the only last vestiges <laughs> left of any, any non uh, meat products. Um, so bring me to my, my, my current status. So when I went carnivore, again, it was not on purpose. It was just kind of this slide into carnivore and I'm like, Oh, I guess I'm carnivore now. And, uh, I'm very happy, happy. I have energy. My anxiety is gone and I don't feel tired throughout the day. I can get through my day. Things don't affect me or stress me out as much. It is 
my mental well-being is is far and away better. Um, the length of sleep that I'm getting has not improved, but it's like the quality has improved because I get my, I don't know, six or seven hours of sleep and I feel great, like ready to tackle the day. It's amazing. Um, but here's the but. <laughs> Uh, I have noticed that on carnivore, so my weight dropped down from that 138 initial, 138 back in February. It dropped down to 118.7 or 8. Um, and I was so excited about that. But when I ate carnivore all summer, so starting in about June, uh, going through August for those couple of months, I did put on some weight. So I'm currently, my weight is about 125.6 pounds. So seven pound weight gain uh, being on carnivore. Now I know to some of you, what's the big deal? Like 125 is amazing. Well, it is amazing. But for us women, especially I think, and, and probably for some men too, but you know, I, I'm not a man, so I can't judge that or, or gauge that. But for women, for me and for my friends, for other women that I know, when we see that scale go up, it does something to our brain. And, you know, I had this journey of over 30 years of obsessing about the scale. And so seeing that scale go up, that, that's, that's not easy for me. But I did not go off carnivore. In fact, like I said, I, I'm beef, butter, bacon, and egg, and a little chicken, mostly for the most part, eating either OMAD or TUMAD, depending on the day. Uh, did not stop. Refuse to let that make me stop. <laughs> Carnivore because I feel so great, right? And my clothes still fit. So I try and try to tell myself it's muscle, right? My body's healing. I know there's other carnivores out there like Kelly Hogan. When she went carnivore, she initially gained some weight. Um, I, I know my body and my metabolism need to heal. I keep telling myself those things, right? That's my mantra inside my head. Like the scale doesn't define me. How I feel defines me. My mental well-being defines me. How my clothes fit is what I'm looking at, not what that number is on the scale. So, uh, true to my nature, uh, I didn't just give up or seek something else. I, I, I'm going to go full steam ahead with carnivore. But I did just happen to see a Dr. Barry video recently where he interviewed Dr. Sean O'Mara. And if you haven't watched that, please go watch it uh, because it was amazing. I believe Dr. Chafee interviewed him also, and I watched that too, but after the fact. So Dr. Omara it, on that interview was talking about visceral fat as a major, major health marker and then talking about the ways of reducing that visceral fat, uh, one of those being carnivore diet, which I'm already doing. Uh, another one, though, being sprinting like sprinting, top speed, for short distances, daily. So I am currently in the middle of a 30-day sprint challenge. Oh my gosh. Yes, I get out there in the morning at about 6 a.m. This Today was day seven. So I get out there and I sprint up and down my street. Now let me tell you, before carnivore, I never, 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 never would have done that uh, because people can see me. <gasps> right? Gasp. A 47 year old woman just sprinting up and down the street uh, must look ridiculous. I don't know. I don't care because I am in it to try to improve my overall health at this point. I don't really have any further weight loss goals, although it would be nice, but I'm not worried about it. I'm, I'm, I'm trying not to worry about it. I'm not worried about it. Uh, you know, if I can hold where I am. So I bought a scale that's supposed to measure more than just weight, you know, body composition and all of that. I'm also not getting on that scale every day. So I have some body composition measurements uh, from the beginning of the 30 day challenge. Well, actually it was day two for some technical difficulty reasons, but basically the beginning of my sprint challenge. And then I will weigh myself at the end of 30 days and uh, also be sharing those numbers with you. So beginning and end numbers. Stay tuned for those. Um, so that's where I am today. I, I'm, I'm happy. I feel great in my body. I'm currently now working on health goals and I hope 
that if anyone else out there is like me and struggling, that you, you know, put that down in the comments, comment to that. I'll be happy to come alongside you. Uh, we're, we're in this together. Nobody can do this alone. Uh, shout out to my teacher friend, Miss Gina Marie Richards. She's been doing this right along with me and thank goodness because that support is, is invaluable, invaluable. So if you, if this resonates with you, please like, please comment and I will get back to you. We can, we can do this together. Um, so yeah, I, I'm going to go meet some wellness, one piece of picanha at a time. <laughs>